As a horse trainer, we're always uh, exploring new avenues to the well-being of our horses, and alternative therapies are a huge part of that. Whether it's acupuncture, magnetic therapy, or, or deep massage, or you know, chiropractic, uh, there is a serious place for all of these measures, uh, and it seems that sometimes it's difficult getting uh, the appropriate people on the backside in New York. Uh, we, we travel a lot, state by state, uh, go to Kentucky, Florida, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and it doesn't seem to be uh, quite the issue it is here in New York. Um, the veterinarians don't have time, they aren't educated in this area sometimes, but they certainly don't have time to spend an hour with a horse manipulating them, stretching them, working on muscles, uh, doing acupuncture points, whether it's uh, with needles or with pressure. Um, so, it, there is a serious place. Uh, we, we, the non-invasive measures like uh, the electromagnetic therapy and the, the laser therapy uh, is very uh, um, important to us because we, we, we don't like to stick needles in, in these horses if we don't have to. But they are athletes and they do get kind of aches and pains and we tried to get rid of them as, as best we can. And uh, there is an industry that's, that's needed back here, and we'd certainly like to see them uh, incorporated into, easily incorporated into everyday life back here. And uh, a lot of them that are, that are tie up fillies and horses that strain their backs and horses that just not going perfect behind, I would get the girls to come and help with them. And like that filly that won the grade one last year, Miss Shop, she, they worked on her a lot because she used to tie up a lot before that and of course horse that tie up a lot it you know naturally gets them to where they're sore and uh, over their back and things and she did very well with them working on her and all through the years I've been using them I always thought they had their merits. It's very easy to understand how valuable this is these uh, you say alternative therapies and that's what it is but the that includes so many things and a lot of the modalities and there are improving modalities every day for treating injuries in humans and athletes combined. The, uh, I can go way back with this type of therapy. Uh, one of the probably founding members of this whole therapy group is a young lady in Lexington, Kentucky, Mimi Porter. She spoke all over the world at uh, veterinary conferences and probably human conferences too and she's been a leader in this whole field doing it and I remember her starting in this uh, field using these different therapies that what we're talking discussing and just having tremendous results and I would see that too and she'd relay the information to me and then, of course, as a veterinarian, I had to go buy some of the machines and try it myself. Well, after treating about 10 horses, it got boring as could be. So they're all, or I loan them to the trainer. You do it, and they tear them up in two weeks. So virtually the veterinarians, that would be their experience, and they don't want to mess with it. It's a, it's a lot of time uh, they spend on these horses. It's tremendous, but the benefits are what counts. And every Every athlete in the whole world, humans or horses or dogs, whatever, they actually sprain muscles, they sprain ligaments and joint effusion and uh, shins. They have experienced tearing of the periosteum and call it buck shins. And all these modalities that are being used are a benefit in treating these along, you know, with the rest and other methods that veterinarians use. But Really, I think overall the veterinarians are very pleased and excited to have people that do this type of therapy. And as a trainer, you just don't have the help and the time to be working on horses all the time. We, everybody has busy jobs. Grooms are up for horses. The foremen are making sure they're fed properly and looked after properly. So it's important to have a therapeutic person that knows that's an expert with each unit that they're using, whether it's a nebulizer or, or, or what they're using, they understand it and they're professionals and experts with that and we're willing to pay them a fee to come here and help us with the horses. As a trainer, you use an alternative uh, means of getting these horses to the racetrack, keeping them, keeping them fit, keeping them happy. I like to use equine massage, blankets, uh, acupuncture, uh, you know, 
These horses, uh, this treatment is non-invasive. Uh, you just try to stay out of the joints. Uh, these horses are athletes. They go out there and perform on a daily and, you know, uh, training and racing. And as, as a result, they get, they get muscle bound, they get tight, they get sore. And I found with this therapy that it's a great way to keep horses in training, keep them happy, stay out of their joints. And uh, not only as a trainer, but as a rider who get on my horses after treatments, I can, I can see a difference straight away. Uh, a horse that would be uh, come out of a race or out of a work that's particularly tight, uh, takes it about a half a mile or a little longer to warm up. Uh, we find with treatments, he warms up almost immediately. He's a happier horse, moves better, easier on, on his joints. To eat better and as a result to perform better and um, I think it's just a great way of, uh, of treating our horses without, without uh, having to invade the joints and I think it's the very important part of my stable and I, you know I hardly depend on this. Uh, and it's been working and certain horses is, they're very very useful one thing for sure they can harm it's only help and, uh, and again, certain horses need a lot of stuff, and not only has to be done by, by, by veterinary medicine, you can use uh, alternative th stuff, and the, the, the magnetic blankets are, are very useful, the, the pads for the feet are very useful, increase circulation. So all, all those stuff, I mean, without being as silver bullets, are, are just very, very good for horses. There are actually some, uh, uh, some newer therapies coming out and they're being used in horses, just starting in horses and they're very exciting, I mean, to being used in the, the football players and basketball. Is one is pulsed electromagnetic therapy and I've already seen some unbelievable results in like bow tendons and in the pulled suspensory branches, you know, very strained suspensory branches. and. Uh, but uh, that's even another point, what these young people are doing, working with these horses, this, uh, the actual equipment they use, they don't give them away. This one instrument, uh, I think, is uh, list for $35,000. So, I mean, if somebody would go out and in that expenditure, they want to feel sure that something's going to help, as we're talking about horses. They wouldn't do that unless they knew it'd be of some benefit. So that's just a good proving point how beneficial they all are. And they're doing it with ultrasound now. Um, therapeutic ultrasound is so beneficial in so many ligaments and, and damage and tendon damage and joints too. And then small things like cap talks and, uh, and shoe elbows, uh, capped elbows, where they bruise the bursas, and these treatments, they're not very amicable to our treatment, injecting them, you know, and drain them, they come back, and it's ugly, and the, this therapy, it's amazing, you know, how it helps them once, and there's so many different ones they use, and none, the one very important point is none of them require needles. So actually, they're not violating any code. They never put a needle in a horse, something like that, because nobody can do that. It's not supposed to, except a veterinary license to practice in the individual states. So I think I'm speaking on their part to, you know, we want them to be here working on these horses because they're a tremendous benefit for the horses and they help the veterinarians do their job better and it would be a shame if they can't practice these type of therapies. I don't see why they should, anybody should be against it. I mean, they're honestly doing the work and, uh, you know, I don't see why it should bother anybody that they do it. I believe in it. I mean, I, I don't like to waste the owner's money, you know. You know, if, if, I, if I don't think it needs, things don't need to be done, we don't do them. But when we think something's going to help our horse feel better going into a race, we, we want to do it. Naturally, but the longer you can keep away from giving the horses drugs, because all drugs have side effects, and they get dependent on them, and you know, you never know. And then uh, some drugs are not allowed close to the races, and you have to be careful of that. And this is one way where you can work on them. You don't have to be worried about things like that. We need to have it available year-round. Um, every day because issues come up. Um, each week there's different issues with different horses. Um, Debbie's worked on many different horses for us with uh, the Magna Wave unit and it's helped many different horses in different ways. Sometimes you just have a nervous filly that you can't quite figure out what's bothering her and she 
figures it out and helps us and works on them and they're much better mentally and it's things that we can't do with our own hands and or an exercise rod or a groom could not do so we always need the therapeutic expert to help us out year round. A, a good way is, is, is somehow attaching them to an arm of a vet uh, if they have the approval of one or two vets or what, uh, whatever uh, and, and submit that to the Racing and Wagering Board if they have a history, if they have some kind of accreditation uh, out of the state or out of the country. All of that should be looked at. I mean, I don't think they should be able to walk in off the street and, and, and do this stuff. There needs to be some control and some verification, you know, that they are qualified to be doing what they're doing. But uh, sometimes that hurdle, uh, they don't even know what exists. It's, it's, just, it's a blind fence they have to jump, and, uh, and nobody can give, give a real good answer as to what is needed other than the veterinary license. And, uh, you know, so there has to be some kind of, of solution because it's, it really concerns the well-being of the horses and their comfort, their safety, and their ability to perform at their uh, highest level. Yeah, I think uh, uh, something would be good for a state regulated, if they want to regulate it, have some, is have the either come to the racetrack or have them have to go to Albany, if, most, if they're, say, at Saratoga or Belmont, and actually have like an oral exam, a quiz, if they want to get some, you know, people in the medical profession, chiropractors, chiropractors use all this therapy all every day of the week, I mean, something and really help people's backs as do the young people are doing it here have, let them have an oral quiz and see if they know what they're doing with it and i mean they'll they might know more than the people that are quizzing them and and then if everything's okay we'll just i mean if they want to charge for a license just give them a license to do alternative therapies in animals i thought to compare this whole scenario as one last point is that Think of all the uh, human athletes uh, the, from the co all the college programs in football, basketball, track, soccer, everything. All they injure uh, ligaments and strained muscles, hamstrings, whatever, hurt their Achilles tendons. And in all these training facilities, these same modalities we're talking about are therapy. They own every single one of them. And I'd venture to say there's very few doctors ever touch those athletes. And this is virtually what we're talking, the same thing going on right here. These young people treating these horses the same way.